Twin Peaks Unwrapped. I'm your host, Ben Durant, and beside me is... Brian Kazaska, and beside me is... JC Hotchkiss. Hello again. You're back. I'm back, <laughs> and ready for action. By, by popular <laughs> demand. <laughs> yeah, yes, we, um, I think we got all-around positive feedback yes. when you were on the show. It's it a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I'm glad that it was long. I think it was, it was what, like an hour and a half? We, yeah, we, we yeah. Talked it was a great a show. It was a good show. It was a good show. And I want to say right now, it's like we would love to have you on once a month if you'd be for it. I'm good with that. Well, that'd so, be awesome. So we can. So listen so, up, guys. Once a month, you'll hear this voice. <laughs> and it won't sound like Irene from Haps like it did almost last time. What? I thought you sounded great. <laughs> thank uh, you. Thank uh, you. No, no. It, I had a cold. So when you, you know when you hear yourself back and you're like, oh, Jen, tone down the laugh. Tone down the laugh. <laughs> It was your first time yeah, in the exactly, show, though. Exactly. So. You're awesome. Yeah, Thank you got to give yourself. You. It, it is weird when you listen to your, yourself when you're editing, and you're just like, "Oh God, why? Yeah, why did I say that? Or, or I should have said that differently. Or, or yeah. I, should finish, why I, I, say, I forgot mm, to say that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or Brian, why didn't you finish your thought? <laughs> No, nobody even it's, knows. It's very, nobody even knows you don't finish your thought because I, I edit. Yeah, it. I know. I know. But I listen to it going, "Oh my God, I'm a train wreck." Uh, so, JC, what have you been working on? I mean, you're, you're involved, of course, with 25 Years Later site, and uh, also mm. they've kind of paired up with Cult TV. Can well, we, so, we, yes, we are a Twin Peaks website. We are not going away from that. We are still Twin Peaks heavy, and that's where our heart lies. But we wanted to expand because, obviously, we don't know what's going to happen, whether or not there's going to be more shows or a movie or another book yeah. or whatever's going to happen. So we wanted to expand our viewership and kind of – discover things and and watch things that maybe other Twin Peaks fans would want to watch or listen to or read or so it, it started it, we're doing cult TV right now but we're going to also expand that to cult movies and cult music and uh, Laura's working on that or uh, one of our editors Laura who I love hmm. who's over in overseas there in <laughs> England Wales it's so uh, she, crazy I'm, she's going to kill me that I can't remember exactly where but our, yeah. our our friend across the pond. Yeah. It's so um, crazy to think that you guys are everybody so far apart. But when you go on that web page, it's just such a tight knit community. Oh, we you know if you could see the conversations <laughs> we have in the editors' room. <laughs> but yeah, no, we are. You know, it's funny. It's Twin Peaks is definitely a family, and especially with like so like we said last time with social media, it's made it more of a family. Yeah. And you know, I, I like I said, and Andrew knows this. I found my tribe. Like I, they are they are my buds. They are my friends. I mean, yeah, we we ha finally had a Skype meeting where we saw all each other like in person. Like we know what we look like because we have photos, but you know, mm. like we actually got to talk to each other right. like online, and that was really cool. And it's you know we're they're my friends. Like you know they need something, I'm there. So so we definitely wanted to you know bring that in, and so we we Andrew kind of came up with it, and and Eileen is is spearheading this cult TV because she loved the X Files and she wanted to write about it, you know, because mm -hmm. it came back. Um, but then I discovered The Alienist, which is on TNT, which everybody needs to watch. Jubal, I know you wrote me on Facebook and said, you know, people were kind of panning it, but I'm telling you, watch it. It's awesome. It's when just they incredible. Pan it, it means it's good. <laughs> yeah, I know. well, yeah, exactly. Because nobody, yeah, well, you know, it's the same thing. How much they pan Twin Peaks. Yeah. I mean, it's, and yeah. that took a long time, you know, for certain people to get. And even, and people are discovering it now. So it, exactly. you know, exactly. But yeah, we, we, we covered the OA, the killing. The Alienist, X Files, and we're looking for more. Actually, I don't know if you guys, Mark uh, Frost tweeted, retweeted today. David Bowie's son, uh, Duncan Jones, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. did a movie, a Netflix movie called Mute. 
Oh, really? And it's Alexander Skarsgård and Paul Rudd. And oh, wow. Oh, yes. my God. I that. I, it's new. Oh. I, I, I don't know if it's based on a graphic novel, a book. I Forgive me. I, I don't. But I knew it was coming out because I had seen talk of it. it and I followed Duncan. A graphic novel. A graphic novel. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, where it's... Let me tell you something. The trailer looked good. I watched it four times yeah. because I was like, oh, my God, this looks so good. So I like wrote right away. I'm like, somebody has to cover this for cult TV. I mean, it in, incredible, incredible. Mm. So we're trying. But like I said, it has that very kind of odd vibe that, mm. you know, that Twin Peaks does. So we're we try to find things to cover that, you know, are Twin Peaks esque. Yes, I guess, so to speak. Or or we try to take something like John Sheesby's writing for The Killing. And he's um, taking the story and then comparing it of how it's similar to Twin Peaks. Yeah. Right. So then people can kind of go, oh, okay, you know, mm-hmm. because it's you know you have the hardcore fans that are still you know which we are all of. I really haven't felt like watching anything since Twin Peaks has oh. been over. I and I found out <laughs> Amazon Prime people uh, one and two is on Amazon Prime right now, so I'm like yes because That's Showtime good. took one and two off, yeah. and they just have the return, and I'm like. I really want to watch the pilot. Why did they take it off? I don't know. That's weird. Well, it's on Hulu and it's on Netflix. Yeah, it's on Netflix. 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 I yeah. know. And I don't have Netflix or Hulu, but I do have Amazon Prime. So oh, I'm like, yay! It's there. <laughs> you know, when I am not, when I can't sleep and I want to watch a little, uh, you know, Audrey Dale, yeah. you know, action. The funny thing is, I bet, I'm sure you have it on DVD, right? It's just that... No, I don't. You don't have it on don't. DVD? I don't. You know, it's funny. I was Twin Peaks, Twin Peaks, Twin Peaks, you know, yeah. when I was younger. And then... Fire Walk with me, I watched obviously, and I and I liked it right from the very beginning. Some people didn't, I did, and then I, I didn't just DVDs. I didn't buy them. I think yeah. I own like two DVDs. One is like Goodwill Hunting, and the other one is Breakfast at Tiffany's. So you know, forgive right. me. I, it's just not my bag to like have DVDs. You know, I I was a VHS girl. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. I have Twin Peaks a version <laughs> of it on VHS somewhere that I recorded <laughs> off. You know. Yeah, but um, I'm gonna go on a tangent real quick. Yeah, go go. Do we all watch the new series uh, season of X Files? Do we? Do you watch X Files a little bit? All right. Well, there was a recent episode. Uh, what was, what's the name of it? The, the oh one, yes, the last the, one where David Duchovny is trying to find the the Twilight Zone and he's got all his VHSs yes. all stacked. And, and yes. my wife is saying that's you, Ben. No, it's not in here either. Mulder, what I don't understand is how this guy knew about your secret rendezvous signal. Who cares about any of this, Kelly? I can't find the lost Martian. Yeah. Oh, no, I have VHSs like that. Like, I have dance recitals from when I was, like, right. five that I'm like, wait, that's over yeah. there, and this is... Oh, yeah. Right. The Mulder's weird thing try- is, Mulder's I thought of find- you too, Ben. Oh, did you really? Yeah, I did. I said, Mul- that's Ben. Mulder's trying to find his favorite episode of The Twilight Zone, and he can't find it on his DVD collection, so now he's gone back to his VHS VHSs. collection. <laughs> and I, I do that for Twin Peaks. I mean, I sometimes like, I know there was a commercial during Twin Peaks, and I'm looking for... It's Mandela. VHS. The Mandela effect. The Mandela effect. Yeah. You know what, though? I'm sorry. It's true thing. It's true thing, because I watch walked into Target with my son and I'm looking at the books and the Berenstain Bears and that oh and I'm like that's not how it was written before I, so I said it's got an E it's not an A and it's an A and I'm like no I swear one. to God that it was an E I'm like trying to find my books that I had as a yeah, kid to like you, look when you look it really it was Berenstain Bears yeah I know and, that's and we crazy, all isn't it? we all called it the Berenstain Bears yeah exactly. it just sounds it sounds better, better. yeah it does. and that is the biggest one. I think that's what really set off this this yes. online rabbit hole of like, oh my god, is it other things too? Yeah, because right. you Google it and then you're like, wait a second, that's not right, or you, yeah. you, you yeah. try to remember something. No, they that's did a not great. It. That was a great episode. I really yeah. liked that episode a lot. So I think, yeah. but we we should find out your birthday and get you a Blu-ray of Twin Peaks go. or something. Because like, July twenty six, just say, and it t- <laughs> and this year is a big birthday. I'm turning forty. So there you there go. You go. So th- that's a big one. So yes. I think the, the community at large, we should all pitch in. You have a Blu-ray player. No, but I'm. That, it's no, but I'm getting. <laughs> oh, no, I but, wait, no, 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 she doesn't have a DVD. I, so why she have a DVD? Player? No, I have I a DVD player, family, but it's not a Blu-ray. I thought maybe the family DVD. would have a Blu-ray or something. No, no. Well, then we, okay, not. we now got to get you a Blu-ray player, and we got to get you <laughs> the, wow. missing, the missing. Start pieces. a GoFundMe. Jen <laughs> needs a Blu-ray player Next, and you Twin Peaks DVD. You have to say you're watching an old TV CTR, <laughs> and that would be like, now we need a TV. A bu- <laughs> By the end of this, we're going to be buying you a whole surround theater system. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, well, it's kind of like it was so funny. Uh, Gr- Greg, Greg Ruth, and we'll, this will segue into the next thing I want to talk about. Greg Ruth, who's an amazing twin. Well, he's an amazing artist, period. But he did a Twin Peaks um, 
a piece this summer called, it was a 52 weeks project, I believe, and he did the White Lodge and he did some pieces that were gorgeous. And he did a lot of pieces of Kyle, you mm-hmm. know, as Cooper mm-hmm. and Dougie and Mr. C. I don't know if he did a Mr. C now that I think about it, but yes, he did one with the three of them. But he did a lot of pieces and it was funny. It was around somebody's birthday or something. I think Twin Pete's, which is one of our writers. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I want this. I'm like, and then Twin Pete goes, I want it for my birthday. I'm like, there you go. I'm like, we need to buy it for your birthday. And then my birthday came up and somebody goes, Kyle, you should buy this for her birthday. And I'm like, oh, yeah, Kyle's going to get right on that. I said, come <laughs> on, people. <laughs> That's too funny. And congratulations to uh, Twin Pete's. I know he just joined 25 years later, not that long ago. He did, right? not that long ago. And he has he has a... Uh, a column that's called uh, Unim Solitaire that's based on Harold's uh, oh, diary thing yeah, yeah. where he's yeah he did um, Jill Watson and he's did uh, Stephen oh god it, uh, Stephen Miller that or Sam Howes is how he's on Twitter and who um, th- this week I believe it's Ivan Butka huh. Ivan's gonna kill me that that's he said awesome. his last name, but Butka yeah. I mean, we met Pete at the fest with him yes. and his wife, mm-hmm. and a uh, very smart guy, very nice, and that's awesome. I, I love mean, it. It's 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 Twin Pete's and Mrs. Pete's. That's yeah, that's yeah, how yeah, it goes yeah, by because yeah. he wrote uh, I the babes when we did the uh, article about meeting the cast members, and he wrote about Al Strobel and how at the fest it was like eleven o'clock, and he was like the last one. They they said you know only ask him, don't ask him any questions, just have him sign. And I guess Al was so lovely to him and his wife and asked him questions and how do you want it written and you know would you like a picture and nice. yeah yeah it, 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 that was really sweet. So it was nice to know that yeah. Al but, Strobel was a true gentleman. He was a nice guy. He very seems nice. like a very nice man. And yeah. like I loved on the DVD where he talked about the story about how he lost his arm to David. How did you lose your arm? You told me once. Sixty years ago. Sixty years ago, huh? I had a very fast car at sixteen years old. And I was coming home late one night in the winter and I did thawed during the where, day. Where, where is, what part of the country? Madison, Wisconsin. Madison, Wisconsin. town you know well. Mm-hmm. And uh, it thawed during the daytime, and the water had kind of flowed into these little black ice rivers. Mm-hmm. And I was, it was, I was, and at night it got down to about 15 degrees. And I was going way too fast. And I hit that black ice and got sideways, and when the tires hit the dry pavement again, it flipped the car over, and I was shot through the roof and landed about 75 feet up on an elm tree, and plopped to the ground, no sight, nothing. And I'm feeling, I'm feeling around, and it's all mushy. And I found my cranium back here and plopped it back down. And then I left my body and went up, and then I could see. And I, had, I could see that I had landed in the front yard of a house with a light on the snow in the back. And then I went up and then through the proverbial tunnel, fought like hell to come back. And when I came back, uh, the light was out. It turned out that the guy had been taking a shower when the crash happened and he didn't hear it. And then he'd gone to bed. And somehow I was able to get him to come back out. And he was a deputy sheriff, and the station wagon in his driveway had oxygen and blankets in it. Yeah. Lucky. Didn't he? Yes. You know, even though David Prudbury heard it before, but for the you know for the DVD, I was I texted Ben after this story. I'm like, that's such a good story. Oh, exactly. It was such a good story. Absolutely. And yeah, it is eerie. David Lynch attracts these weird, um, these people that just have these odd backstories. You know? Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. Because if you think about it, yeah, because I was trying to think of like, I mean, Kyle MacLachlan is the only one I don't know about his. Backs, if he has a weird backstory, well, but a lot of these people do. Not a bit weird backstory, like... kind of a sad, and, and I won't say sad in like a truly sad backstory, but you know, and I've heard him tell this story, so Kyle, forgive me if, if I get anything wrong, but I will say his backstory was, you know, he grew up in Yakima, Washington. He 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 went to college. He he want, he actually studied singing too, I believe. He studied music and acting, and then you know he was out of college and. He was doing. I think he was doing stage stuff, and then he got a call from a casting to 
fly down to L.A. to meet David for Dune. Mm -hmm. And he, it was like a whirlwind casting where he met David and, then, and read the lines and with him and then met Dino De Laurentiis. And, met, and then they were like, okay, we're going to go with him. And then, of course, filmed the movie. And then the movie bombed. And then he was like, I'm never going to work again. Mm. And then David had approached him while he was doing Dune with the Blue Velvet script. But his mom got sick with ovarian cancer. Oh. And I guess she had concerns about the script. So Kyle kind of put it aside and said, no, I'm not going to do it. He picked it up again and said to his mother, I know you trust my judgment. So I really want to do this. And she goes, I do. And, you know, think, but she ended up passing before she, he, mm. he was able to see it to completion. Mm. So which he, he said in a recent interview, I think it was with Alec Baldwin, he goes, which was kind of a blessing because, you know, how of dark and yeah. that, but he ended up, the reason he started his wine business too, was he wanted to go back to see his dad in Washington state. Oh, and wow. it was something they could do together. And which I think is a really sweet story. So it, it just makes me love him even more. Oh. And, and you know, speaking of Dune, um, he was just on Stephen Colbert, and Stephen Colbert oh, yes. was saying how... But I'll tell you, the, the, part, the part that I, I was most jealous of is I'm uh, a big fan of Dune. I heard that. Yes. Yeah, what a great, great Amazing. book. Amazing. And when yeah. I read... When I, had you read the books before oh, you got yeah, the part? Oh, yeah, yeah. Jim Lumblad gave me the book when I was 15 years old, and he said, you got to read this book. It took me three tries to get past page 60. I mean, it's, I don't know about you, but it, just so many different things coming yeah, at yeah, you. Yeah. So there are a lot of different names coming at you. Yeah, exactly. And and all this stuff. But it was my favorite book for years. I wrote Dune quotes on my English teachers. Mrs. Crago, on her blackboard, I would write quotes. This was in the eighth grade. From like fear is the mind killer. Yes, the little death that brings total obliteration. Exactly. I will let yes. fear pass through me. Yeah, I, I, yes. where, where fear, I will exactly. only I will remain. Exactly. 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 Yeah, eighth grade, of course. It's, it's all about fear. Because you thought, you thought someday I will play Paul Atreides. I, will. I knew it. Did you think that? No. Because I did. I, did you really? I thought you I it. have to. I read Dune my freshman year of college. I'm like, I must play really? Paul Atreides. <laughs> I must be Moadib, you know, yes, the Quitzach yeah. Hadarach. Quitzach Hadarach. All of those Yeah, things. exactly. Oh, well, you would have been perfect. And then I saw that you got the part, and I was really angry at yeah, Kyle McLaughlin. Me for a while. I hadn't even worked at that no, point. But anyway. Then you met me at the Kennedy Center, and you said, well, he's actually okay. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had had a lot to drink. And... <laughs> It was a great interview. It was no, that, was, that was a great... Really? Yeah, yeah, it was a really great interview overall. I loved how, you know, they talked about Dune and they talked about, you know, how people think they look alike. Yes, and then he yeah, said yeah. about the mayor of Portlandia, which I love you, Stephen, but no, nobody could play the mayor like Kyle. No, I'm uh, sorry. There's scenes that I, I go back and rewatch of him as the mayor in Portlandia. And, you know, people are like, oh, who knew Kyle was so funny? I did right. because SNL. Hello, that oh, yeah. SNL episode is one of the best from uh, what, is it one. It must be ninety-one. But it was ninety-one. Yeah. He was also in How I Met Your Mother. He was also yeah. Oh, was the captain? Port oh my yeah. god, uh, Portland. I mean, he has been in so many other things. Yeah, he he's he's a well-rounded actor. I mean, yeah. you know, um, somebody had said something on Twitter, and I said, even if I wasn't a fan of Kyle's as like an actor, like he's a fantastic winemaker, which I. Thank you, Kyle. Speaking of, yeah, did you? Did you our wine tasting is. Yes, I, I look on Twitter and Jen. I look on Twitter and JC is like, oh, uh, the 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 wine tasting so is sad. canceled. Here. Even though they said it was delayed till March. March well, it was delayed till March, and now it's like delayed indefinitely. So like I it's definitely know. postponed. Where do you get this information? Tell me more about this. No, Renzel is is the, it, where the wine tasting was through, which is actually a pretty cool thing. It's an online. Um, reviewing site that you sign up for and you can like get points for reviewing restaurants in New York and Boston yeah. and DC and their and their customer service is excellent because when I wrote to them about the Kyle tasting they're like oh yeah all you need is this many points and you can attend and blah 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 See, I didn't know that. So we probably wouldn't even be able to go anyways because we don't have any points so what? no but you could no you could buy you could buy the points oh, okay you could because I ended up having so many points for doing some of the surveys and then I ended up buying some points is so it we like would be able buying to go. a ticket almost right so, sort of I mean they don't want to do it that way but for this event I think they knew that some people were gonna you know yeah, do it yeah, but yeah. so we're close we're very close to new york and boston so i figured eventually i'd probably attend one of these restaurants and be able to review them i had yeah. you yeah, know yeah years and years ago in another life you know i was involved in restaurant management and restaurants so um but yeah so the tasting was supposed to take place in september and then they said okay we need to postpone it because kyle had a schedule conflict okay fine and march 1st <laughs> they put as a placement date and i'm like yay spring okay I'm, <laughs> we're still gonna get there and then today I got an email and says, you know, unfortunately, you know, Kyle was nominated for a Golden Globe, which yay, Kyle. But, you know, his schedule has been tighter. And so I even wrote that. I, I tagged him in a post on Twitter and I said, 
this is my face and it was sad from inside out Aww. that the, 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 the tasting got canceled yay Kyle for getting more work and, and your schedule you know doesn't allow it but boo because I really wanted to drink some of your wine with you and Aww. tell you how fabulous you are but that's okay we'll, we'll eventually we'll get there guys his gain is our loss yeah I know yes yeah, true <laughs> But I mean, good for him. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it sucks. We, you know, before the Golden Globes were about to happen last time you were on, and now they're over. And and I didn't thought, dun, dun, dun. It, yeah, that was sad. I mean, the only competition was you and McGregor. And I won. thought. Here's you know? here's my thought, and you guys, for what it's worth, and you know, there's a huge following for Times Up and this the women's movement, and mm, you yeah. know, voicing your concern about violence and equality and everything else and Kyle was brilliant Kyle was brilliant as Dougie he was so innocent and loving but he also played one of the most evil conniving hmm. deadly characters and who did brutalize and kill a woman on you know on yes. the show and who you know was not nice to others and I'm almost tempted to say that that could be possibly why hmm. he did not win I mean I love him, and we know he's not like that, and we know it was a character in a in a movie, and it was a scene, and it you know, whatnot. But that I'm almost tempted to say that that could have been the reason he may have not won, because he, in my eyes, he deserved to win because this yeah. acting was top notch. I mean, he played four different, five different characters. Yeah, unbelievable. You know, he played Cooper, he played Dougie, he played Mr. C, he played Richard, he, you know, he played kind of a middle of that. So... And the acting was so different compared to the two. Compared, like, they were yeah. all different. I mean, yeah. it, I, I truly look at pictures of him as Mr. C and go, he's not there. It's kind of like, I can only compare it to, have you ever seen The Man with Two Masks? Or the man with the no, the man with the iron mask with Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he plays Louis, and then he plays the brother. the bad the yeah. brother the bad king. Yeah. I forget whatever's yeah. you know. He, when he's Louis in this innocent and nice and stuff, he looks different than he does as his vindictive kingly mm. self. Mm. I mean, he literally looks. It looks like two different actors that are twins. Yeah. So, and that's how I felt about Dougie and Mr. C and Cooper because Mr. C looks now, mind you, he had contacts and his hair was different and yeah. whatnot, and they gave and his, him that. Yeah, his face looks like almost bigger. Yeah, it did. His it's jowl, like, it, like yeah, he looked jawline was bigger. Yeah, like he looked completely different. It didn't look anything like him. That's the only thing I can think of. And Ewan's character, he played twins, so yeah, he played two characters. But I mean, and he was good. I and watched I Fargo, Fargo he, yeah. and I like Fargo, and he was good. Yeah, but he wasn't I mean, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he yeah. was. I get that. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. But I, you know, it's it's sometimes it's paying your dues and sometimes it's not. I I don't right. know. Hollywood's Hollywood's a weird. I can't remember who said this. I don't want to put, say it's Scott Ryan, but somebody was saying. So this is the the Golden Globes is by the foreign press. Yes. Hollywood foreign Hollywood press. Foreign, yeah. foreign press. And Hugh McGregor is from. Is he not Scotland? A, Scotland. So that it was like, oh, maybe it was a better chance for him to get it because he's not. You know, Maybe like, they favored him more, more. because I don't he's know not. I mean, there's so many yeah. different reasons. Yeah, why, it could be. I, that, yeah, theories absolutely. abound. So, theories abound. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, in true yeah. Twin Peaks fashion. Yeah, and I mean, it's so cool that even the words Twin Peaks was uttered yeah. at the Golden Globes. Oh, absolutely. I I, I, it's so funny though. There was a meme. I think it was a meme that came out because they're like, even the cameraman thought that Kyle should win because immediately after they called you and McGregor, they panned to Kyle's Kyle's <laughs> table yeah. and his face. Like almost like in shock that he like, didn't win, be, yeah. 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 like which was <laughs> kind of great. But yeah, yeah, no, it it's uh, it sucks. Yeah, yeah. It's, it does. Yeah. It does. I I was disappointed. I, I literally after that I kind of was like, okay, I'm done with this. But I didn't. I watched Oprah speak, and that was great. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I watch. I love the Golden Globes. Every <laughs> I do year too because it's fun because they're drinking and having a good time, and yeah. you know, it was it was great. And Laura won. Yes. So yeah. that was so yeah. that was great. Even Laura though it was for Renata, but you know, hey, it's. Yeah, this is I call it the, the year, year of Dern. Yeah, I call it the year of Dern. I just saw her briefly, and she was briefly in a movie, um, downsizing. She's br brief. Oh cameo. yeah, I heard that. I heard that. Yeah. yeah, and and then like she was in so many other things. She was Star everywhere. Wars. There, Star Wars and yeah. Twin Peaks and House of uh, little, Lies. A little uh, no, uh, not House big of little Lies. big little lies, lies was the was the show. Yeah, I I always get that confused with House of Lies. I'm like the the Different I don't things. know. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, she's been everywhere, and good for her. So it's been her year, it's yeah, she's feel the Dern. They had shirts. Reese, she's good friends with Reese Witherspoon, and I follow Reese on Instagram. And they had a picture of it was a dinner that they all went to, and they all had shirts that were written like Star Wars, and it said "Feel the Dern." Oh, like yeah, it that was great. Awesome. And then Mark Hamill retweeted it and said, "I want a T-shirt, and I want to go to dinner with you." Right. I thought it was great. I'm like, <laughs> and then Laura did respond and like, "I'll go to." Yeah, go yeah to we're on. Yeah, yeah let's right. go. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I want a nice. shirt. Who wouldn't awesome. want to go to dinner with Mark Hamill? Let's be serious here. Dinner, right? yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, were you talking about the the art life? Project? Yes, I'm sorry. Let's go back to that. We'll come full circle. Um, <laughs> yeah, the art life is is a um, project that we're releasing on 25 years later. It's it's spearheaded by Laura and uh, Matt Armitage, and they're interviewing artists. And I'm actually going to use my notes for. I imagine these are Twin Peaks artists, the artists that do Twin Peaks. Yes, stories. that yeah. do Twin Peaks art. So it, I mentioned Greg Ruth before. So that we've already interviewed Greg Ruth and Jess Purser. Who do awesome, awesome Twin Peaks art, but um, and those have been published. But we're doing a lot of more exciting interviews. Um, Blake Morrow, who did the um, the Twin Peaks photos, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. From, he's from yes. Awesome. So we're we're interviewing cool. him. Chris Vector, who obviously you know, Chris Vector was like all over the place. Showtime Twin Peaks and yep. the posters and stuff. I loved his work. Mm. And uh, Lula Wayne, um, who's a bookhouse babe. She's oh, cool. she's one of our bookhouse babes. We love Lula. She's she's a, like visual artist and performance artist and she sings yeah and she's, i like her, her work on twitter there she, yeah she yeah. does a lot of stuff and she actually just I, I just saw the other day she released a bunch of t-shirts so you can now go and get some of her sketches on t-shirts which is nice. pretty cool nice so yeah so that that that's great and um i guess um greg ruth is he's gonna there's new white lodge works he's doing some new works and mondo's publishing the work in poster form for sale so that's really cool because it's it, his his stuff he it was the summer of obviously of Twin Peaks, but yeah. he was mm. one of the artists that just it, it just captured he just would, would see something and it would use one of the lines like this is the chair and then it would mm. be this photo or yeah. that he has yeah. one where like David as Gordon is like floating and the tree is like within him and I, it's wow. just that just the visual aesthetics of his art was brilliant. I mean, just really like I went to the Wadsworth Anthonyum because obviously we can say we're in Connecticut. Yeah. And um this weekend and there was some art and I'm just like, oh, you know, and it's so it's like it's like that he had pieces like I could see in like, an, a, you know, an exhibit or wow. it was that sort of great, yeah. great art. I would love it if like I, I think they did in New York two years ago have a Twin Peaks uh, or David Lynch kind of inspired art show. Yes, I think you're yeah. right. And it would be so cool if they did one again in Connecticut or Mass or New York. Boston, and they, it was like a david lynch inspired art show you know like yeah. i would love to go to right. one of those that yeah, i remember it was in new york yeah, yeah. And well maybe yeah. there will be when fest of disruption comes this right week. yes we're going we're going yes. right? to that. new york it's really gonna exciting. be new york yeah. I, keep, I keep telling my crew i'm like you know if we don't go to fest let's go to let's go to new york let's right. go to fest yeah of disruption. we were gonna go to uk fest but now i'm like no we'll just go to new york i'm for that yeah i mean i, yeah. I, I think it's cheaper <laughs> <laughs> I think we're trying to do like one festival type yes. thing a year. year and, yeah, but it, if it's in New York, I mean, Lindsay it makes so does a job. great job with the yeah. UK fest. I mean, I, know. I mean, and she gets the actors and Next, I mean, so we just can't afford. So I can't afford two things. No, I know. Yeah. I know. It's like it's like safe or like New York's a train ride and some right. tickets to go see the fest. Yeah, you know, yeah and because the thing. this the fest in New York, the tickets are around two three hundred bucks. Yeah. And then I'm like, do I want to see? Would I, would I be interested in VIP or do I not? I mean, I think oh, we're well, talking for the some... fest. Let's. See. I mean, come on. Well, yeah. how much are those? They're, like, they're... Fi- they're like five hundred or something. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah they're Holy not. A, they're not close to a thousand. I thought. Right. They I were, well, they were for. It depends on how many days you go. If you go to the whole fest and stuff, but it's just. Yeah. I mean, they're reasonable. They're not, uh, you know, obscenely expensive. Right. But you know, hey, it's. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it... to meet the man. Come right on now. Yeah, I mean, to get there is cheap. The hotel. Would be... We split it, whatever, and well, we have we, other people that yeah, would join us. I think so we can figure it all yeah, out. Yeah, well, that would be cheap. It's just the, yeah. the price of admissions. Yeah, probably the most expensive thing. Yeah. And eating because New York, oh god, it's so expensive just to eat there. We're just there for that. Uh, the, uh, oh yeah, for, for the, the MoMA thing. Yeah, MoMA thing to be able to see. We we saw about. I saw eight hours on on the big screen of Twin Peaks and stuff like that. And yeah, yeah to stay there. I, I felt. Like, I think I spent almost thirty dollars just for breakfast, and it's just like it is ridiculous. Thirty dollars. <laughs> Get twelve bucks here, man. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's it's you know, there's something about the the energy of New York though, which is why yeah. I love the fact of the whole glass box and the whole mm. that he had in New York because 
it, there's just some there's something about New York. I'm going to go back again. The Alienist is so interesting to me because it's based in 1836 New York. And that's something. That's pretty cool. So it's yeah. like they like when you see some of the shots, you're like, that's how New York looked, and it's almost like well, Gangs of New York, which I don't know yeah. what the year that was, but it's about the same type of you know. Mm. You're seeing this history of New York. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely, cool. and it's just the in the excitement and in the findings and the you know it's yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm down for anything that happens in New York. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I I walked by the actor who plays Ray. I can't think of his name now. Oh, George Griffith. Yes. yes. So I walked by my him. buddy George, who needs to email me. Yeah, <laughs> just saying, George. He walks. I, I'm walking. I'm in the wrong end. Oh, this, of so this is the thing. The, I get the, it there. The I get to the I get to New York a day early for the for the screening and stuff like that. And yeah. you're coming in that Saturday, Saturday, and you're coming in and you you. I'm right. on the wrong street, You're on the wrong which street. is the, sa- the same building, yeah. but a different entrance. Ray, who uh, he, he was George. George, was going to the same entrance I was, but I was leaving, and he was coming, and he had his phone out, and he's taking photo. And I go, I think I just passed Ray, but I'm so freaking cold, I don't care. I was freezing. It was freezing. Yeah, it so was cold. I, I'm like, uh, uh, whatever. I think it's him. I told Ben when I got there, I'm like... I think I walked by him. That's I think cool. he was standing and taking a photo. But I just was so right. cold. I just needed and to get inside. And it made sense because they were talking about having a celebrity and of that, Twin Peaks yeah. uh, for the event. I think both Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. yeah. And he was and he was yeah. there. Yeah, but I think he sat a couple aisles behind us. I try to get Brian to have him talk and maybe see him. And, and Brian's like, we'll do it during break. And so yeah, there was like an intermission him. time. Yeah. But I went up to George and I shook his hand. And I just said, thank you. And I didn't bother him after that. But I thought that would we, we could get a moment. But right before the, it ended, episode eight, uh, part eight, he took he's, off. He's and, gone. And, and I think other people got to run into him, but we missed Well, probably him. because that was like one of his big things. So he probably, or who knows. But right. yeah, no, the, the thing about George is he, you know, and hopefully he, listens to this or whatnot but he's an incredible artist himself like i follow him on instagram and he's got an eye for photography that's like it's very close similar to david's vein Hmm. um he does these really kind of i won't say provocative but yeah sort of provocative kind of like black and whites with with women and and stuff and he definitely uh, uh, um, admires the female form uh, as far as that but it, they're really, really neat. Like I always, he does like a lot of the, you know, the twenty-four hour videos that you can hit on Instagram, yeah. and I, te- I tend to always look at them. And there's not a way to respond to those like nicely. Like, like yeah. you, it's you have to send the person a message. You can't like oh, just really? like those. Oh, yeah. Right. And which Instagram fix that? Would you? Because it's like sometimes like I want to like something, and it's like it's send message, and I'm like I don't want to send a message. <laughs> I just want to <laughs> like it or say a little comment. Speaking of another artist, Ronaldo Zuntage. Yeah, yes, Ronaldo. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so he did one where it's it's Ray George as like it, like with his head like right, cut off like a, with like, like the bullet hole in it, like a uh, deer like, hanging like on, the a deer on the wall. On the wall, yeah. That's cool. And I and I wrote I wrote underneath because I saw it on Instagram first before I saw it on Twitter, and I'm like. I don't know how to feel about this photo. Like, I want to like it, but yeah. I'm like, you kind of marred George's pretty face, and I feel bad because it's like, you know, right. the bullet in his head, and it's like, <laughs> great. Which George appreciated and liked the comment because I was uh, like, yeah, I'm like, you you kind of marred his pretty face. <laughs> I know I retweet most of his work. Yes. Yeah, so I was like, this is kind of disturbing. Yeah, that one was that one. I, I like a lot of his work, yeah. and, and but that, yeah, that one kind of bothered me. I'm like, yeah. It's art. I know, I know. He was shot by Mr. C and the whole thing. Right. But <laughs> did it say the buck stops here? I don't know if that's. Yeah, what I think or some. It said some or the or the effer or something stops oh, right. here or effer something. Stops yeah, right. yeah. Right. I, I will. Yeah. I will I be PC in that sense. So yep. I will not swear. That's hilarious. Um, so the art life project. How often is uh, are you guys putting out articles? On I this? believe it's. Go to 25 Years Later site, read everything. But yes, the art life will be on there. I, I Laura knows more. If you want to know more, you can write. I think. You can write to her on Twitter. She's Mama Lula. Because I know know that, you know, obviously X-Files is every Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Have you been watching X-Files, though? What do you think? I, I watched the first one, which I was like, okay. I'm like, you're, I, I was kind of with... Eileen, where I was like, you're changing the times. Like, if you're going to change a timeline, follow David Lynch's style. Hmm. Like, don't completely change yeah. and make it... it it's kind of lazy. Well, it was very lazy because yeah. it's like, oh yeah, it's not your child. Are you kidding me? Like the, the, give me a break. Like if you, it's it's science, people. It's like you know, birth takes nine months, and you got to go back, and if you carry the one, it's that you totally yeah. like screwed this well, up. Well, I didn't like the well, fact that retroactively got 
may tend not happen. And then all of a sudden, Skinner, he can read uh, brain uh, messages. He's like, it's a message from her brain scan. Like, how the hell did you figure that in two seconds? It was, I thought the episode was just... Yeah, well, it was no, throwaway. Talking about, you're talking about, so first you're talking about uh, Scully's pregnancy. But even back in season seven, there was always theories that could have... Cancer oh, the, Man could have... Scully Smoke Man, yeah. Yeah, could have... could have. Uh, we think he's lying, though. We don't I think, think he's lying. Oh, I think, oh, I think he's lying. But There's like he, he, what he was implying was that it was through science... Uh, uh, IVF and stuff like that. Yeah, but, yeah. but you Still didn't creepy. like that. You didn't... No, I didn't like that. And then, then I like the second episode. I don't think I saw yet. I read Eileen's thing because I, I'm one of those people. And forgive me, but I like to know things, if, especially if you know, if I'm going to be bombarded by spoilers, I'm just going to read them mm-hmm, because it's mm-hmm. not going to ruin it for me. It's mm-hmm. knowing knowing what happens at the at the end of things doesn't ruin things for me. Like I'll, if I want to read a book, but I'm not going to get to it for like six months, like tell me the ending of the book. It's wow. not going to ruin it for me. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Like, it, like surprises, like, you know, the sixth sense, I, it was one of the few things that I actually watched. And then, you know, when it came out and cause that was when M Nate Shyamalan was like huge and it was the big thing. Yeah, He's yeah. coming back. He's, He's coming, coming back. back. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, no, he, I, eventually, I mean, well, did he do split was really split. Good. Yes. Which yeah. people are saying he redeemed himself with he that. Did. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I see. Have you seen him? Breakable? I've seen him. I seen him breakable, and then I knew it was so split, and then yeah, and the thing, yeah, yeah, I watched, and and of course, and then I read it because I I w- didn't watch it, then I read it, then I watched it, so <laughs> no, so, yeah. but but yeah, with that, and you know, you kind of. Uh, you know, I I I noticed the red. I noticed some things throughout. So it was kind of like when it happened, I wasn't like as shocked as most were. I was kind of like, oh, that makes sense. Hmm. You know, uh, my shocking thing was that it was Donnie Wahlberg was the patient, like because yeah. that did not look uh, like Donnie Wahlberg. I mean, so that was when he weight. first started yeah. getting into acting, and yeah, he yeah. for this party lost all the weight, and people are like, that's not him. And I'm like, it's him. I'm wow. like, come on. So yeah, so that was really <laughs> impressive. But um, no, I, I, so I'm that type of person. So for me, and I didn't. I watched last week's with with Mulder with because I had to with That's the age of the man. I thought that one was really good, yeah. and I and I lean tended I think to like that. I think one everybody well. seemed for the most part really loved that one. Yeah, I don't know if she loved it, but she she definitely liked it. I have to go back yeah. see because I read her thing, but I've been reading a bunch of our stuff, so it's like sometimes they all kind of, and then I've been trying to write my own stuff. That's got to be tough. It is. It is because it's like I want to get into more theory because I have more theories about things. Mm-hmm. So, like, I tend to, like, I love my new phone where I could say, hey, Siri, you know, like, <laughs> make this note for me because, like, I'll be thinking about something and, like, like I was in the, <laughs> things happen in the shower. This is a conversation that we have all the time in the editor's room. I'm like, I was in the shower and this came to me. And Eileen is like, yes, that happened to me, too. And Andrew's like, what are you guys doing in the shower that you're thinking? And I'm like, you're, you're there. You're just kind of off in La La Land. So you yeah, think about yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I started thinking, and I'm going to breeze this by you guys because it seemed like people liked our theory conversation. So I'm, I kept thinking about the what year is this and then you know somebody said okay laura wakes up and somebody said you know it's just his way of da 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 da. and then when andrew went on this sunday he posted a lot of our theories a lot of our older theories that people may have not seen Mm. and he reposted my reincarnation um ding dong cooper's dead Uh and somebody responded brooke burgess forgive me Uh, yeah no that's who it was and he said this is what i recorded it was a youtube video couple days after the finale and it was very similar he talked about the bardos like i did for my whole theory thing and and he talked about and he said you know the what year is this and the way he was asking means he's still in the lodge and i'm like wouldn't it be funny not funny haha but like funny like i was just thinking okay he asks what year is this is it because even though 25 years has passed for us yes it's maybe not 25 years for him exactly so like he's there but it's like it's like it was he just walked in, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like even though he's aged, but for him what year is this? Because he his body, if it's there and it was there in We my, don't know how long he was sitting with the giant and it's past, present, or future. Right. And is also, it past or is it future? He right. drives by the one armed man or a giant? He, no, He's sitting with the giant. No, when he's sitting oh, in the giant in the beginning in the yeah, black yeah, and yeah, white. Yeah, right, like right. we don't know how far along I mean, because if if that's here's the funny part. If that's and being part one but if he, though Giant is warned, if it's a w- true warning and not just to have him remember it's a warning because you are far away. Far away to me would be like he's still in the lo- He's still in the lodge. He's brought to the White Lodge, but he's still in the Red Room. Mm-hmm. So the, the what year is this is almost like saying, okay, what year is this? Because he's, he's still there. Like he thinks he's where he is with, with Carrie. But he doesn't know. But he's not. And at the end, it's Laura as Carrie with the short hair with him. So obviously, 
and not to interrupt. No, no, I, you I, can I, interrupt um, me anytime you want to. No, the um, when they're going to Laura's house, they pass the double R diner. And the double R diner is the old double R diner. It doesn't say to go on the side. It's the old double R diner. Now, see, somebody somebody said, no, could... people said that, and a lot of people speculated, no, that was a double R diner like it is it used right, to be. Now. Well, right no, now. Like it is right dimension. now. Yeah. Wait a minute, I'm confused. Meaning the, the to go one would be present. No, because the to go is that was that's a Twin Peaks thing, but that's not an actual like the actual Tweeds Cafe yes. didn't have a to go. I thought no, it, it does? does. It does. Does it really? When we were there. Yeah, they it does. Did. Yes. Oh, it does. It says yeah. to go on the side. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, then that makes but, then that makes a difference. Yeah. So I think I think that to me makes it feel like it's the past. Right, it could be. Why could it be the future that you just take some paint and you... Uh, uh, you uh, move forward, though, generally. I mean, to go would be like uh, something you do now. I, and the other thing that... I don't know. I mean, well, no, and the other, thing, the other thing that makes me believe this, and it was something my coworker said because I have to say that I got my coworker turned on to Twin Peaks because when I started talking about it and talking about it and talking about it and I wanted to talk to somebody about it, mm-hmm. he's like, damn it, I should just watch it. So he went mm-hmm. and he watched season one and season two and Fire Walk with me and then he got Showtime for free so he <laughs> binge watched wow. se- season three just so he'd be able to understand because he was yeah. like, all right, I'll do this. And he right. loved it. He loved it. But he was saying to me, he's like, the interesting thing he found, he's like, let's look when, okay, when Cooper walks out yeah. and he sees Diane and then they go to the power lines, the car that he's driving. Yes. It's an old 1950s car. Yeah, yeah. the car changes. And the car changes. But but the fact that it's older, Uh huh. did they already, when he walked out, was it already a, the year? It wasn't in, yeah, okay, he went to the future. Is it future? Is it past? That top okay, is, yeah. is, to, is uh, Double R Diner. D- now the and show, that's the old. And that's the one we. I, oh, we okay. I see what you're saying. Says yeah. it to go and has a line. Yeah. So to me, it makes me feel like something in the past. Right. But I mean, yeah, no, it, could be, it but, could be that way too, Ben. I mean, like, you could see it But way. he mentioned the car and then he mentioned the, ho- the motel because of the two floors. That's a very old school hmm. thing. So th- right then and there, they went back. So if they went future, did they go future 89 or whatever? What, 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 did he, what is it? February 24th, 1989. 89. 89. Or did they go to you know present day? But, yeah. it, but the car itself, if you look, it's, a, it's an old Lincoln, right? Yeah. Which was a very 80s car. Uh-huh. Hmm. It's weird. Is and, it and so, so, the, yeah. so like I started thinking that I'm like, okay, is he asking like, what year is this? Is he doing it because he's disoriented? Is he yeah. doing it because he sits, he, he's finally his, and when, when Laura screams and, and the, you know, the house, ex, you know, the light explodes and whatever, cause they hear it, it brings him back to where he's sitting with her. And that's why she's whispering to him. you you can't leave. You're like, even though she says you can go now. Yeah. Well, it's the weird thing like, is part of that whisper, though, is there, there seems to be some other information that she gave in that whisper. Like, he says you can go, and he wants to know, well, when can I go? And it seems like she then shares more information about... Well, and he goes, uh-huh. Like, he makes this, like, thing, right. which it's, which and it's not a good reaction. Like, you're dead. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, that's... And I wrote about it. I said she... I think she whispers, because I try to listen to the audio that somebody put on YouTube and, like, turn yeah. it up. Yeah, I can't yeah. hear anything. And we heard it... Th- oh, I heard it's, it It sounds thing. like, hey there, dark suit no it, it, it sounds like dark dark suit the only one who it sounds like the only one who knows you is me and your soul is mine that's wow. what it sounds like that's to me, very something, creepy well but what would make yeah. sense is a lot of people speculated well maybe judy is attached to laura somehow yeah i think judy's think a presence was a presence so maybe yeah. he, he's trapped by jow day judy or whatever and laura's part of this and, and to throw a wrench into the thing. Okay, go right ahead. That's not Laura. That's Carrie Page in the Red Room. When we were watching the documentary before we had Charles on, I watched on disc seven of the Blu-rays um, during uh, Richard Beamer's and documentary. And they call her Carrie Page. Yes, yes. they call her yes. Carrie somebody Page. Somebody called her t- – I heard this. I rewatched this recently, and somebody did call her Carrie Page, but David Lynch calls her Laura. There- when, Just but, saying but, that, I mean, it I, seemed to me like it was a crew member that called her Carrie Page. But why would a crew member even know that? Because we have, I don't <laughs> you know, know what I'm saying. Well, it depends on who the crew member is. I mean, you yeah. got, like, look at, you have Malone, who's a set dresser, and who was the guy who's in the John when Tom Sizemore comes in and dumps the coffee, and Malone's been around since the beginning, 
and he's like he's like in the know. Yeah, so it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. so you got cuz one of my favorite favorite scenes from the DVD is Richard Beamer is panning the red room and all of a sudden he like stops for a second and both Kyle and Malone are on their cell phones and they like stop and they wave and you see Malone with like his booties on and, yeah, and yeah, Kyle yeah, standing yeah. there like kind of yeah. smiling and they're just and it was the best thing I even tweeted that I'm like this is my favorite screenshot from the <laughs> DVD and Malone retweeted it and liked it and stuff so it's I, I don't know I I think once they're on set, I think people are in the know. I mean, I know David kept everything pretty tight because he didn't want anything to leak out. But, I mean, when you're filming a scene, yeah. it may say on the sides, it may have said Carrie Page. Go yeah. ahead, Ben. I'm sorry. I, I, know, I, you... I know. I know. Well, before Brian starts talking, I wanted to say a couple of things. I think we learned from Richard Beamer when we have his interview that that was uh, when he was on set, they were near the ending of production. So, I, yeah. I, if I'm putting this together, I feel like the Carrie Page stuff might have already been filmed. It was because it was filmed first. Was they filmed talked first. about that because yeah. they there was spoilers. TMZ yeah. oh, had right. they got a filmed huge all that spoiler. The first day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was like the yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the Red so, like, Room the stuff was last. It was the right, very right, last right, right, two right. days. So we are on the same page. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You could call her Carrie Page because they have already filmed Carrie Page stuff, and they're used to calling her. But Carrie. some of the Vegas stuff was last too, because don't yeah. they they wrap Kyle in Vegas, don't they? They wrap Kyle so many times. Well, yeah, I know. Well, they wrapped him as Mister C, but I'm saying. They, yeah. But as no, I think it yeah. was the one because he's in his black suit. They filmed a lot of it way out of order. I mean, it's yeah, crazy. Of course. Well, I think to throw people off, yeah. too. But she had the Carrie Page hair, and she, I don't know. I just think it's interesting that someone did call her Carrie Page because you're right. She had the hair. So makeup and stuff had to make her look like that. They had to have the same well, it continuity. Well, the actually have short hair. Though. Well, here's the running joke. Here's the running Laura joke. Palmer didn't have short hair there. Laura Palmer had longer hair. Yeah, she did. She, she had did. Long hair. Well, here's so the interesting. Here's the running joke, especially that Andrew always has, and he and I think I wrote about it in one of my articles. He says, "You know what really ticks me off is that how did Cooper?" not grow a beard being in there for 25 years and stuff he's like what is, what is there is there like a bathroom that you know he in with a shaving kit that he, he could shave and keep himself a moment yeah. of disbelief you, you know well that. right right yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. as a joke but saying I okay know. her hair changed it's now short it's not long but they you know when he goes back they made her look exactly like she did when she was you know filming in 89 or right. 90 or whatever yeah. it was so it is weird. There's a, different sense, there's a different sense of time, though, it seems yeah. like, in the Red Room. Like, I don't know. Yeah, if I, well, it's a, if it's suspension of disbelief, which you're saying, I mean, right. a time means nothing. And right. if you think about it, this is why my theory of him being in the Bardos and the afterlife is is kind of on the money, because your soul doesn't know time when you're stuck in these Bardos and when yeah. you're going farther and farther. And if he's Bodhisattva to Laura, he's not, he's, he's falling through these pits of hell to try to save her when it's at the same time he needs to save himself and this is fire walk with me but see this is where the timeline goes she's she saved herself she took herself out she decided Mm -hmm. to face her you know face Mm -hmm. her demons and her death and that's freed her from her trauma um and and then this brings it back into a whole different ball game which is we we could go for hours but since we don't have that time tonight i was gonna say i just want i want to follow up more about uh what year is it a little bit yeah go on so in season two, Major Briggs is goes missing a few times, and he comes back, and he'll be like, "What day is it?" And he's uh-huh. disoriented. Yes. And then I don't think it actually ever made it into the film, but in Firewalk with Me script, David Bowie says, "What year is it?" Like when he comes into the FBI, there's a whole thing is like he's confused. No, but does he say? Now that you say that, I, I don't thought... know if it made it into the film, but there. Hello, is that you, Cooper? Meet the long lost Philip Jeffrey. Ah! I'm not going to talk about Judy. In fact, we're not going to talk about Judy at all. We're going to keep her out of it. Found something. Who do you think this is then? What the hell did he say there, Albert? That special agent Dale Cooper. For God's sakes, Jeffries, where the hell have you been? You've been gone down here two years. It was a dream. We lived inside a dream. And it's raining post toasties. Hell, God, baby, damn no! I found something in Seattle at Judas. And then there they were. And they sat quietly for hours. And I followed.
in the script, there's a whole, it's a ca- there's a whole calendar. It's a, man- yeah, it's a mandal effect. Did he say what year is this? <laughs> did he I say think he it? did. In the in the cal- uh, no, in the script, I think there's a calendar, and he, and, yeah. and and that's where uh, Gordon Cole says May Day, May Day, and he looks at the calendar, and it's May. May. Uh, 1989. And uh-huh. He's like 1989. Yeah, he's confused and he's about like, it. And I thought. I think in the script he says, "What year is this?" Or he's kind of con- he's well, So I guess what I'm getting at is that it seems like these people who are going through well, he's slipping through the t- yeah through through the dimensions. Like are, if are he's kind of yeah, having, they're, it, they're like kind of yeah. How could you? I yeah, guess. they're always disoriented because they have no idea where they are. And I think, yeah, yeah. And, then, and then Gordon says he goes, you know, and he goes, Philip was here. No, he wasn't. You know, it's kind of like. But my my thing about that whole, it's going to that scene for just really cl- clear, and then we'll go back to the what year is this? Is the who do you think that is there? That always, and people are like, well, it's Cooper. Nah, 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 nah. There's something. It, it, it's so. And here's the circle, and here's the infinity loop, and here's everything else. That Cooper is not the Cooper. That yeah. that we're used to, which I'm almost like, that. is it Richard Cooper? Like, is mm. it the Richard there? Because it's definitely not the Coop, right? That we know, because and you could tell from that scene where he's talking to Gordon and he's saying, you know, and I had a dream and it was about a girl and da 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 da. Yeah. And, and he knows like, everything about Laura, right? That's what I mean. Which so is that's weird. which is well, th- but if he's in the lodge mm-hmm. and if it was like if you go, <laughs> so if it's if it's if you if you go, that's why I'm saying it's like there's a lot of information in here that you go back and you could do right. and this that and the other thing. Yeah, and, the infinity loop. I mean, yeah. because I yeah. and that's the other thing too. Because my thing is okay, and this was another thing that I will write about. So just, but I'm going to give a preview here because I. I'm sure somebody has written about this, but I'm going to write, I think, more detail, and this will be something I'm working on the side because I have so much that I'm involved with. But the the Cooper in Twin Peaks proper when we, in season one, that's 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 your Dougie before Dougie. That's the good Coop. That right. is, he is already sans his shadow self. Yeah. He is not complete, which is why he's so damn fine coffee, <laughs> d- d- cherry pie, <laughs> donuts, and so up and so Tibetan and so he's so, because this is all the positive part. Yeah. Even though he, in season two, they kind of brought it down and they made him talk about Caroline and, you know, he did this and then, right. and then, and then think, but I really think that that he was already split and he had to come to Twin Peaks to get himself together from the mm. very beginning. If you're going to look at three the way it is and how he had to come together or one of them had to go back, uh-huh. he was brought to Twin Peaks. This was all set in motion. It, 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 with how important Cooper was to three, even though Laura is the one, Laura is the one that set this all in because right. because even Bob says I uh, Leland when it's Leland he says you know I know what you did in Philadelphia and I've been watching you I mean right. how has he been watching him you know, know like so obviously there's a whole so if he's been watching him since Philadelphia what did Bob go and visit him in Philadelphia and that's what Jeffrey sees I think it was if we go you by the I mean? audio uh, the autobiography book it seems like he was even in the dream in Cooper's dreams as a child possibly I right mean, and yeah. they said his mother and the whole thing yeah his mom had Dreams I have to reread that because I, I read it years ago. Obviously, yeah, it's good. It's very right. good. Yeah. What is? I had one of the. I had something else about. Uh, oh, I was thinking about nineteen ninety two Fire Walk with Me. What was I going to say about that? Uh, I just I already lost my. Th- oh, I mean back then in ninety two, I you know I, I I saw Fire Walk with Me in the theaters, and I just assumed when he pointed to Cooper that he's talking about Bob. It's like it was like a way of saying, do you know who that is? That I know that Bob is possessing. Or right, it could it, be. It could be because he could see it because only certain people, like, look at Sarah, could see it. Yeah. How, you know, it's interesting, though, because Firewalk With Me, it's still one of those things that I didn't really notice it until we watched it in the theater. But it is odd that Cooper comes to the Twin Peaks not knowing anything, and this has happened with Laura. But in Firewalk With Me, um, he basically is telling Albert about how he had to dream about this this girl who died and she's yeah. blonde. And, you know, if you go back to Twin Peaks, you, you'd be like, he would be like, oh, my God, I had a dream about this. But he never mentions anything like that. Well, so right. it is a different uh, yeah. kind of uh, – it's Lynchian to change it up. Right. We're almost, we're, we're almost out, out of time. Yeah. But real quick on that, we learned in season three that Gordon Cole uh, says that Cooper always had a plan to get – to, about Judy and stuff, or Jude, and so Cooper was actually going to Twin Peaks on a mission besides Laura Palmer. Yeah, it could be, but the thing that gets me wrong about that, and seeing this is where David and Mark and everything else, it's because 
in Marx in the secret history, doesn't they talk about Briggs bringing somebody in and mm-hmm. he it's Cooper, but Cooper doesn't know that. And then he realizes that Cooper has been possessed by Bob. So he, he trounces that and he doesn't do it and everything else. And now you got Gordon saying, well, Cooper or, or had the thing. And I'm thinking, no, it was Briggs. But did he change it because Don Davis died and he and he was supposed to have a bigger part? Did he did he on the fly? Did he side, decide to change it to say Cooper? I mean, I, 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 I don't feel know. Like they're all part of this the Blue Rose Task Force and they don't know it because I mean Briggs was part of the, the original one Blue with Dougie, yeah, Project right. Blue Book with Dougie and then Milford, we had Cooper, yeah, part of the Blue Rose Task Force and um, and oh, Chet Desmond right. and, and he does come into in the pilot Cooper comes in and talks to the town hall and say hey you know I see similarities to other cases mm-hmm. and I right can't talk right about it. so because he, Teresa Banks was right. obviously a Blue Rose case yeah, yeah. yeah. so, so there, it's there but it, it is kind of messy and, it's, yeah. it's a muddled yeah. but it's, you, you <laughs> to connect the dots <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's been great having you on the show again. Yes. I hope we can do this again next no, month. No, we're going to next month. We can, we can, you yes. know, there should be more from 25 years later. Maybe there'll be more news from something else. I mean, who knows? We, Hopefully. And maybe Kyle will change his mind and he'll sign some wines. Yes, in New York. I know. But I, yes. I do feel, I, I still, my gut tells me this is not the end of Twin Peaks, that we're going to get something more. I, I, do. I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, uh, you know, like Scott Ryan said, you know, Showtime is still trying to do their thing and and yeah, I exploit Twin Peaks. I didn't like that. I I heard him say that, and I and I'm kind of disappointed that Showtime said that. But we we won't say that. Oh, you know, I think it, in a business standpoint, well, I here's, here's make more money off of that. Here's yeah, and but that's what networks are supposed to do. So yeah. I can you trounce them for it? No, I mean, I would rather have them. But you know what? Hey. Showtime note: Share the love. L.A. isn't where the only fans are of Twin yeah, Peaks. I know. Like, can you Should put one in Chicago, Georgia, New York? I mean, come Boston. on, people. Boston. Like, come yeah. on. Like, let's let's share the Twin Peaks. They're getting love. The, 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 their office. Showtime's office is in New York. I know. I think know. it's funny, and they haven't done anything in New York City. They, it's like come we on. did one thing: the barbecue thing last but year. That was before the uh, yeah. That was before the yeah. This I know. Is, I mean, now they're the doing pop the pop ups. Are and they did. They, they, they did a Roadhouse pop up comedy club weekend. Oh, the they did. They did magic. Sketch they did the ske- well. The sketch fest was different, but they but they did a lot of stuff. And it's I'm like, like, bring it here. Come on, guys. Like yeah. Like even like even make it a pie and coffee shop. You'll clean house because people right. love pie and coffee in New York. Yeah, yeah. I know. You know, it's like people will stop for a cup of coffee. You know, anywhere in New York City. You know, so yeah. come on. Like if you do that, <laughs> and, you know, and, and there's and there's actors that live in New York. There <clears throat> are. <clears throat> Kyle, hello. <laughs> Bring your wine. Bring I know. Your pie. Yeah, I know. You, you think they wouldn't come together on that? Like, Kyle, we're going to do a pop-up. You're going to sign. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, come on. I mean, it would be, yeah. Why? Bring you your bring wine. It? No, it's, yeah, no. Yeah. But anyways. So bizarre. But anyway, so, yeah, check out 25 Years Later site. We're working on Cult TV. Guys, check out some of these shows because they're incredible. Look out for the art life because that is, you know, incredible too. We're also looking for writers. So if you have a piece that you want, nice. you know, if you want to write for us, you know, put something together. Send it to uh, Andrew. I believe I, his his email is on the website. So if you go to 25 Years Later and then Andrew Grievous and you click on his name under the team, okay, um, you can email him pieces of, of writing. That'd be awesome. Yeah. And JC, how can people uh, follow you, see what's happening? They can follow me on Twitter. I believe, <laughs> you know, I forgot my Twitter handle. I think it's J, JC Hotch 726 You're worse than me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Well, I mean, yeah, you could. I mean, under the babes, if you go to Bookhouse Babes, which is at Bookhouse Babes. At, or at the no at Bookhouse Babes. It's not at the. See, that's the other thing. Like, did I put the the? In? No, it's at Bookhouse Babes. <laughs> and then you could see you could follow um, Amanda and myself under that. But I th- I believe it's JC Hodge seven twenty six. If you just awesome. type it in the search engine, you'll find yeah. it. Yes, exactly, exactly. And twenty five year, years later has an Instagram now too, so you could follow us at at twenty five years later on Instagram, All which this is very Instagram cool. talk. Sorry, old, Instagram is like, Instagram is the future. Oh. I I can't. I'm like I can barely do what I do. <laughs> And you can follow us on Facebook, 25 Years Later on Facebook. So there you go. You Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Facebook and Twitter. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm there you go. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. You can't do the three. I mean, <laughs> some people have four. They do Snapchat, too. It's like, forget that. I'm oh not. Oh, my yeah. God. I tried Snapchat once, and I'm like, I literally deleted it right away. I don't know <laughs> how this works. I have flowers in my hair and sparkles in my eyes. I don't uh, want that. Yeah. I was like, why? No, I can't. All right. You can find us at Twin Peaks Unwrapped. We're on Twitter. Like us on the Facebook Send us an email, twinpeaksunwrapped at gmail.com. Thank you for all the positive uh, feedback when we had you on last. And um, that 
that mean it's Keep very it happy. It was yes. very good. And um, anything else, Ben, before we uh, go? That's it. I'm, it was another great show. It was great having you on. Thank, Thank you. you JC. He, we'll see you in a month. You guys, everybody, have a good night. Good night. What year is this? Just start the show, Ben. We're we can done. edit th- this together. It's not a big deal. Just start the show. <laughs> and welcome to Twin Peaks. <laughs> welcome to all right, all right, all right, all right. Twin Peaks talk. <laughs> it's coffee talk. Yeah, coffee talk with uh. All right. <laughs>